This is going to be uh, stuffed portobello mushrooms used as an appetizer. And before I even start, you know, in cooking there's the right way, there's the wrong way, there's the easy way, and I'm trying I'm going to make this the easiest way for you. I'm using chicken legs in this. Why? Because they are tastier than the breast. You can either boil them or steam them. So what I have here is the chicken legs in my rice cooker and there's four cups of water in the bottom there because it'll take a little bit to steam them. And then the other thing you've seen portobello mushrooms, they grill them, they're delicious. No, 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 no. We can't do that with this because what will happen is most likely you're going to overcook them and they can be firm. So these are four and a half inches in diameter. And the fins, we don't want the fins, they're not edible. So what you do is just take a spoon and scrape out all of the fins. And then after the chicken is cooked, I'm going to place them in the steamer, steam them just a little bit so they're still very firm. Because this has to hold the chicken. Looks like a lot of spinach, doesn't it? Well, that shrinks up to nothing. So we have everything here is going in. Line up all your ingredients like this. That way you'll never forget anything. So we have sriracha hot chili sauce. You can add more if you really like it hot. Sea salt, a good quality sea salt. As you can see, the color of it, it's not pure white, hasn't been refined as much. Very good stuff. And um, then we have, to bring this all together, some heavy cream. White wine is going in garlic, extra sharp cheddar, scallions at the end. This cornstarch will be mixed with a tablespoon of water. That way you don't have to make a roux to thicken anything. Like I said, make it easy. Then there's fresh okra, or you can use frozen, but you can't use canned okra, sorry. Shallots, some uh, thyme, of course the mushrooms. Now I put three up here and if there's enough filling to make three, fine. If there's only enough to make two, that's what the recipe will be. I'm doing this on the fly, so I guess at everything. Sometimes I'm 100% correct, sometimes I'm not. But at least you see everything laid out. Now we got to go about cutting the okra, mincing up the shallots, mincing up the garlic, sauteing the okra first in a little olive oil then when it's just about done we're going to add the shallots the garlic another minute with that and then add the spinach which will take like three seconds to cook that part of it's finished the chicken after it's done we'll just pull off the meat off the bone very simply and rip off little pieces or cut with a knife you can roast the chicken if you wanted to, if you want that flavor. But I feel that if it's either poached or steamed, it'll be softer, easier to work with, and the finished product, of course, will be much better. And the cream sauce, after everything is cooked, will go right into the chicken mix with the cheese. So we have a nice cheese sauce. Don't even have to make it separate. The white wine is going to go in right after the end of sauteing and that's about it so let's get started cook the chicken then we clean the mushrooms cook the mushrooms saute everything it's really not difficult I, I shouldn't say it's not difficult it's not all that uh, time-consuming just a little hint on the uh, cleaning of the uh, portobello Place it over here in the palm of your hand. Pull the spoon as you're turning. Don't go the opposite way, you'll rip the mushroom. 
and if you apply pressure this way and it's in the palm you won't be breaking up any of the mushroom cap okay now while this chicken is steaming and we cut up and we cleaned and you have to saute the uh, okra to get that sliminess off of it so that that should take you about 10 minutes or so not too high of a flame moderate flame and you'll see when it starts to cook and you just keep on stirring it now this skillet may look like it's very tinny but it's not you see the base on it see how thick that is not easy for things to stick thick base evenly uh, distributed heat and just keep on cooking like this I put my timer on for 10 minutes and that, that should do it I never you know when I'm cooking for myself without a recipe you don't set a timer you just uh, cook but for items like the videos I want to be exact with the timing so people don't make mistakes uh, ruin the dish and uh, over here the chickens are still steaming away another important thing everything that you cook in a recipe has to be seasoned so I'm just going to sprinkle a little sea salt over the okra I'm holding back on the pepper because uh, that's Sriracha hot sauce should take care of the uh, spiciness. Okay, you know what? Five minutes, that's done. Look at all the shrinkage. Sometimes when you cut things up, you say it's too much. You must remember, everything shrinks. Now we're going to get ready with the, uh, the, the uh, garlic, the shallots, and the spinach. Now with the with a moderate flame, it's not too high, right? Okay. The skillet, some olive oil. Cook the shallots and the garlic. They could be. Uh, clear, colored, if they're colored it gives off a little different flavor, they're translucent, it's good enough. Why is the pan so big? Because the spinach has to go in there, you don't want to have too many pans. And in here also, I'm going to put the white wine after about a minute or two. So. We don't want to waste a lot of film. Do this for about two minutes. And the time. A little, little more sea salt. This should uh, equal the amount that I put on the recipe for the total amount of salt. And when I get done, I'll taste it again. Maybe it'll need more. But don't forget. The cheese has salt in it. And now we're going to add the wine. Just let the wine reduce a little. It'll reduce fast because this is a very, it's a large pan for the uh, small amount of wine that we put in there. Wine always smells good. Spinach. And if you've never worked with fresh spinach before, <laughs> every time I cook with it, whether it be a whole case or uh, it's amazing how it shrinks. Now that may seem like a lot, right? Watch what happens about a minute from now.
And before it's really cooked, we're going to shut up the flame and leave it in here. It'll finish because we don't want to pour any of this off into another pan or a plate. We want all the flavoring to stay right here. So very soon, just going to shut this off and there's still plenty of heat in the pan, like right now. That's it. And as it sits here, it'll wilt even more. You don't want to cook it any more than this because what will happen is it'll start to turn on you and become brown. And you don't want that. Now in that little skillet that we had, I'm going to put the, uh, see, the cream and the cheese. Then into that is going to be the, uh, all done, push this off to the side, blow on it, and then we won't start to cook this yet, but there's the heavy cream and the cheese. And we'll just wait, wait for the chicken. And put the uh, sriracha hot sauce in there also. So now it's just a waiting game. And you can do this item the day before. I think we're going to use some uh, panko breadcrumbs for the topping. As a matter of fact, I'm positive. Just for looks, I was going to say gluten free, but now I can't. Notice the spinach, green because we took it out early. And uh, look how it shrinks to nothing. Uh, one important thing I forgot to mention, uh, the chicken that is steaming over here, still steaming away, the liquid that's in the bottom, we started with four cups. Whatever's left in there, we're going to reduce down to about a cup or a half a cup. I have to eyeball it first. We need that stock, because as this chicken is cooking, the flavor is going into the water. The chicken legs are done, and I added another two cups of water to the steamer because everything evaporated. So now the mushrooms, this won't take long at all. Remember, they have to be very firm. We don't want to have them too flimsy because they're going to have to carry all of the chicken and the rest of the ingredients and also look presentable on the plate. That took about three minutes. Like I said, I made four just in case. Notice how they shrunk? Of course. So now we take this out. The liquid that's in there will be used. Now the panko breadcrumbs that are going over. There's a couple ways to do this. The simplest way, the easiest way, is to pre-toast the breadcrumbs. Then you don't have to shove this into the oven and hope that the color is nice and even on the breadcrumbs. This way, this mix is done, the breadcrumbs go on top, put it in the refrigerator, tomorrow all you have to do is just put it in the microwave and heat it up. Butter, that's about two tablespoons of butter. You can use olive oil, but you know what? 
I'm looking for the flavor of butter on top of this. <coughs> and when I'm all done, I'm going to make one and just put it on a plate. And this is a half a cup of the liquid that came from the uh, steamer. There actually was about three quarters of a cup. I wasn't in the mood to, de to uh, reduce it. But if you smell this, it certainly does smell like chicken and of course a little bit of mushroom. Now the breadcrumbs you want to stir. Moderate high flame. Because as soon as they are ready, you have to take them out of the pan or else they'll just keep on browning. Boy, I use up a lot of plates and other pieces of equipment to make this, uh, to make any kind of video. Sometimes I have to run the uh, dishwasher when I'm done. This will move, and also this, maybe it's not a piece of meat, but you know what? You have to put a little salt in there, because you'll be eating this. So a little salt. That's how it is. Everything that's placed into the recipe has to be seasoned. <clears throat> Else what happens is, Let's say you make um, a mix with a sauce and then you're adding all kind of vegetables to it that aren't seasoned. Well, it just changes the taste of that sauce mixture immediately. The vegetables pull all the flavor into, or put all their bland flavor into the sauce and that's what you get, a bland sauce. So you know what? No waste. I don't want to waste time with the film. You have to keep on stirring this. You notice there's a couple of pieces browning. Just keep on. Smells good too. Just keep on doing that until it's golden brown. And once this starts to brown, as you can see, it goes very fast. Any second, I'm taking them off. Nice golden brown. Now, believe me, if you leave it in the skillet, it'll get even darker and darker. And of course, we don't want that. Now that that's a nice golden brown, not black, we'll just take it off. Now we're going to finish up the uh, sauce. So. We'll add that half a cup of stock to this. And just by looking at that amount, it should be just right for the amount of chicken and the rest of the ingredients. We don't want something really soupy looking. As soon as it simmers, I will add the cornstarch and water mixture, taste it, and then see if it needs more salt or hot sauce. This is the uh, tablespoon of water and the tablespoon of cornstarch. You just smooth it out with your finger, cold water, and don't make it too far ahead of time because then it'll settle again and you'll have to rework it. So this is maybe the most important part. This has to be just right. It has to be the right thickness. Because <clears throat> you don't want it runny on the plate. And make sure you have a thick bottom pan or pot that you're using to do this. Because this could scorch burn if you're using those 
tinny type pan. I'm going to taste this just for the heck of it. You know what's nice? I taste the cheese. It's thickening. The cheese helps it thicken. Now we're going to add the starch mixture and then we're going to throw the chicken in. So all you're going to do is just stir. Much easier than a roux. And for something like this, it really doesn't matter. A roux is important in a lot of dishes. You really can't use cornstarch in many. This is one you can. So we put the chicken. Oh, just take this and pour it over some <clears throat> elbow macaroni. And you got mac and cheese with chicken. Isn't that nice? See how you can just turn things into another dish? And the amount I have here looks, when I mix it with the spinach and the okra, the shallots and the garlic, it looks like it's going to work out perfect. Now, I tasted it, and now we're going to add not that you want it salty, but it has to, salt brings out the flavor of everything. And the sriracha hot sauce, of course I'll just double the amount on the recipe and we'll be good to go. See, nice and thick. One more taste just to make sure. <clears throat> and bring it to a nice simmer because we did add like room temperature chicken to something hot. So you gotta bring the, the temperature chicken up to equal everything that's in there. Because you don't want anything to go sour. Mm. The cheese was perfect. Sriracha hot sauce. As you're swallowing, you get a little bite in the neck there. Then we get one mushroom. Finish this up quickly. Okay, now this is going to also cook again right here, so we'll take it off. Put everything into the spinach mix. Well, let's put it this way. If you like cheese, you like spinach, you like mushrooms, everything happens to be in there. And now the color. Oh, you know what would have been nice in there also? You want to dice up a little red pepper? Maybe I'll get that right away for color. Well, I don't have any red pepper, I'm sorry. But we do have the scallions. So that'll be the green. Well, it's not 100% green. It's got a little white in it. Okay, there's the mix. There's everything. And that's just the right amount. That worked out perfect with the sauce and the solid ingredients. Nice and thick. Now to finish it off right now, let's take a mushroom, take some of the mix, 
and we'll know how many mushrooms this will make. I would say easy four. Now don't forget it's an appetizer. So we don't have to go crazy with the amount. But it has to be enough. So that was two teaspoons and it has to mount up a little like so. So far so good. Uh, to play safe I would say three. But we could make four. Now take the panko and put the panko breadcrumbs all around as if you just toasted it. Now to finish off the top, a little chopped parsley. We're going to take the breadcrumbs off the plate for presentation. You wouldn't put the breadcrumbs on the plate that you're serving. You would put it on a pan, uh, put the breadcrumbs and then transfer it. But there you go. That's a great appetizer. And uh, it tastes good too. Enjoy.